hour of power. We're glad that you're with us tonight, and we're inviting you to call your friends and tell your loved one that Lucas Temple, True Church of God in Christ, is streaming right now. And let them know that they ought to tune in right now and should subscribe. And the like part, you can like it if you like it. Uh, I like for you to like it. Yes. <laughs> uh, but you can like, share, and subscribe uh, to this channel, and we'll be glad to have you. Not only uh, streaming with us, we would love to have you in service with us. Well, come out to 679 Glendale Road, Clarkston, Georgia, 30079. And all you do is put it in your GPS and it'll guide you right to the house. Yes, sir. And I won't give you all the directions. <laughs> the GPS will bring you on to the house. And so we'll be glad to have you at 679 Glendale Road, Clarkston, Georgia, 30079. We'd love to have you in the house of the Lord where we're worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And we believe that this is a true church of God and we are in Christ. And there are other churches that are true. Uh, but there's only one true church. Yes, yes, uh, right. And the reality to that is that God only established one church. Yes, and sir. And he said, upon this rock I will build my church. Right. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God is a true God. And every other church that is true is a true church. Yes, sir. And all we have to do is hold fast to what Jesus gave to the apostles. Mm -hmm. And it's noted in the scripture of truth. That's right. And uh, we hold fast to that, then. It doesn't matter what you call your church. It's, it's true. Yes. And so that's what we want to be. And another thing is, this is called the true church of God in Christ, and we want to be, in fact, the true church of God in Christ. That's right. And, um, and so this is why we teach. This is why we preach. is because we want the church that God is coming back to get. We know what he's coming back to get. Yes. And we want to be a part of that church that is, he's coming back to get that is without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. That's right. But that it should be holy and without blemish. That's right. Now, uh, tonight, we're so glad to be with you. And tonight, I was thinking about uh, talking some about the temple of God. Okay. Uh, I was thinking about the temple of God. And I, I know uh, this is called the Lucas Temple. Right. Uh, and it's called that for a reason. And the reason is, is that uh, a particular man named Lucas mm -hmm. uh, laid stones yes. and built this particular building uh, as a place where the people of God can come worship. Mm -hmm. But it's called Lucas Temple because it's a place where people can come in and worship. Yes. And a man named Lucas actually built this place with his hands. Yes. Um, and, uh, but it's not the church. And sometimes people say that you, you got a man's name on the church. Well, good gracious. That's, that's the place. That's the building. Yes. And Solomon's name was on the place that he built for a place as a habitation for God. That's right. Uh, but uh, the reality is, is that we are the house of God. Yes, sir. The real house of God is us, not a building that sits still. Uh, he doesn't dwell in temples made with man's hands. No, he doesn't. Uh, he, he dwells in us, uh, something that he made with his own hands mm -hmm. uh, and separated us from our mother's womb. This is the true temple of God. Yes, sir. Do uh, you agree with that? I agree with it. Yes, yes. Yeah. God want to live in us. Yes. You know, the buildings and things like that, he's not getting pleasure out of that, but he's getting pleasure out of us. Right. We are to be the ones that God live in. Mm -hmm. And in him, we also move and we have our beings in him. That's right. That might be a great mystery, yes. but that's the truth. Yeah. We in him, he in us. Right. And he seeks to live in us. That's right. Yes. That's right. He yeah. wants to lead and guide us into yeah. all truth. All truth. And, yes. and so we are the temple of the living God. Yes, we are. Uh, you know, Solomon built God in a house, but uh, God don't dwell in temple made no, with men's no. hands. Mm -mm. Uh, he actually wants to dwell and live in us. Yes. And, and we need to begin to focus on making sure that we are a temple and a vessel of honor. Yes, uh, of honor. So that God uh, lives in us and dwells in us, but he won't dwell in an unclean vessel. That's right. Uh, he dwells in a clean vessel. He's a clean God. Yes. And he demands holiness out of us. That's right. And, and that's some of the things that we need to think about. I don't want to have, um, I'm not interested in uh, some type of, um, uh, uh, how do you say it, uh, 
uh, mental acrobats, uh, <laughs> uh, theological debate. No. Uh, I'm into what was it, will it take to please God? That's right. So as, I, as even we talk about the temple of God, I, mm -hmm. I'm not even into just history. Mm -hmm. What is it going to take for me to be a vessel where God honors? Right. And, and you and that are listening to us, okay, I want you to be listening for what it's going to take for me to be the temple of God. Right. You know, because this is what it's all about. For us just to get into uh, some type of debate and no. some type of theological dissertation, that don't help us. No. I don't believe that helps us. We need to know what it's going to take for us to be the house of God. Right. So for God to live in us and dwell in us so that we can not only, he not only live in us in the earth, but we can dwell with him throughout eternity. Right. That's our goal. Right. Because he's a holy He's a holy God, yes. and he wants to dwell in a holy and a clean place. That's right. And so we have to see what it's going to take for us to be that place that God wants to dwell in. Yes. And I feel like it got to be a holy place, and it got to be clean. It got to be something fit for the master's use. Yes, yeah, fit for the yes. master's use. And it's funny how uh, we're going to, God willing, uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3.15. Mm -hmm. uh, I invite all our listeners to get in your Bible, get your King James Version of the Bible, and, and let's look at this together. Uh, but I acknowledge how uh, that the Lord has standards. Yes. The Lord has standards. We have standards. And sometimes people won't acknowledge God's standards, but they acknowledge their own. Mm -hmm. When you get ready to rent an apartment, they go through, they do a walkthrough. Right. Get ready That's to right. buy a house. And you, you got your walkthrough. You got your inspector. Right. And if it don't reach your standard or the ins your uh, inspector standard, you turn it down. You will turn it down. Yes. You just don't accept any and everything. That's right. You're going to rent a house, no running water. Even the, the law would say you can't live in that house that's condemned without the running water. That's right. Without the electricity. Standards. Mm -hmm. There are standards of living especially even in this country, they, we have standards, whereas if the housing doesn't have certain, meet certain standards, it, it will be condemned. Actually. That's right. Mm -hmm. And now in other countries, uh, a condemned house in the United States might be a little house in another country. Mm -hmm. It depends on the standards, yes. you understand? Yeah. And, and really, the standard of living in the United States is higher than some countries. Yes. It's higher than mm -hmm. some countries. The, even the poverty standard of living is higher than some uh, just normal standards in other countries. Right. And I say that just simply to say this, that we actually go by standards. Yes. But what we ought to recognize is that God has standards too. Yes. And his ways are actually higher than our ways. We don't accept certain standards of cleanliness and God don't accept certain standards of cleanliness. And so God is looking for a vessel and a temple to live in that's clean. Clean. If we want a clean house, he mm. wants a clean house. Yes. And so God, we got to come up to God's standards that's and right. his requirements. That's right. Let's see what the Bible says here now in 1 Timothy. No, this is not Timothy. This is Corinthians, rather. Mm. Uh, 1 Corinthians mm. 3 and 15. If any man work shall be burned, mm -hmm. he shall suffer loss. Yes. But he himself shall be saved. Yes. Yet so as by fire. Yes. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? You are the, do you know that? Mm. Do you know that you're the temple of God? You know, as you get ready to do different things, and I know I'm talking to a mixed uh, audience. Mm -hmm. um, and so, saints, just bear with me yes. you, if you're listening. Um, and, and everybody, just bear with me because I'm going to go between the different audiences. I know I'm talking to different people. But uh, if you get ready to smoke a cigarette, if you get ready to smoke a cigarette, Think about what am I about to put into God's temple? Right. Because you are actually supposed to be the temple of God, even if you haven't presented yourself to God yet. You, you know, you just haven't presented yourself to God, but you actually belong to God, even though you haven't presented yourself That's to God. Right. You belong to God anyway. You're just defrauding God. Yes. <laughs> You're just defrauding God. So think about that. I, I just want to put this in your heart and on your mind. You get ready to drink liquor. You get ready to do different things in your body uh, and, and do different activities that even for a good standard of life in this world, even the CDC don't re recommend certain things. That's right. And CDC don't proclaim holiness. For CDC don't proclaim God. Center for Disease Control. They don't recommend certain behaviors because it's not good for you. And what's not good for you oftentimes is not good for society. That's right. Because if, if uh, certain diseases, if an individual got it, 
they can actually spread it throughout the population. Yes. And it'll be a bad thing for the population. And that's what CDC tried to control diseases in the population and make sure that the, the population stays healthy. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so certain things you do is going to be against you and the population. Mm -hmm. It's against you and, 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 and your God that you're supposed to serve. Right. So recognize that. Know ye not. Don't you know? If you don't know, I'm trying to inform you. You are actually supposed to be the temple of God. Yes. God want to live in you. Right. He wants to dwell in you. Right. All right. Let's see what it says, brother. And that the spirit of God and dwelleth in you. The spirit of God wants to dwell in you. Yes. It wants to dwell in you if it's not dwelling in you now. He wants to dwell in you. Right. See, and because the reality is he's not dwelling in everybody, mm -hmm. but he wants to dwell in everybody. And so this, you are the temple of the living God and the, the living God wants to live in you. Yes. He wants to he wants your hand and feet to be his hand and feet. He wants to operate in you so that you begin to love and to help yes. your neighbor because he's not coming down directly. When your neighbor pray for help, then he wanna send you. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's it. He wanna send you. Right. But now if you all defiled and messed up in your body and in your spirit, well he can't use you like that. No. See? Let's see what it said a little bit further. If any man defile the temple of God. If any man, if any man defile the temple of God. Him shall God destroy. God is going to pay you for that. He's going to destroy you for that. Right. He don't appreciate you doing that. Right. Let's go a little bit further. For the temple of God is holy. The temple of God is supposed to be holy. Which temple ye are. Which temple ye are. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be holy. Yes. God commanded you to be holy. Yes. Because he is holy. Right. And if you are holy, he's holy. He can live in you, walk in you, and dwell in you. And then there won't be any schism between you and God. Right. There's no division between you and God. You're walking in the same path and pattern. See, he's holy. You holy. So right. now you're going to walk in holiness. And then he's walking out that holiness in your life. Now, yeah. here's another good thing about it is that as a temple of God, he begins to live in you and dwell in you, and you are not your own. He's actually living through you. Yes. And you're not doing your own stuff. Right. You're not doing your own thing. Right. You actually are using the mind of Christ. Yes. And the mind of Christ is conducting you and telling you what to do. That's right. <laughs> you're not forsaking your thoughts and your ways, and now you done took on his ways. And yes. His, and now you got them higher ways, living and walking in you. That's right. This is a, actually a better way to live. It is a better way. I was thinking, my thinking, sometimes it's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. You know, I sometimes that. people have stinking thinking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've heard that phrase somewhere, but stinking thinking, and yeah. I understand what that means, is where actually you're not thinking the best and it's not working out for you. Right. And, and I've had that. I know about that. Yes. And so I'm not here to criticize somebody else. I know about that myself. Yeah. Because my thinking ain't always been good. But now that I'm surrendering myself over to God and surrendering my body over to him and then presenting my body to him and then asking him to come into my mind, come into my heart and work in my mind, work in my heart. And over the years, he's been writing stuff there. Yes. Writing in my mind, writing in my heart. Yes. You know, like Moses wrote on tables of stone, but the Lord our God in this new covenant, he writes on tables of flesh, the flesh. mind and the heart. Yes. And I thank God for this new covenant right. because now I'm his temple. Mm -hmm. And we don't need the natural tabernacle as much as we need this body to be presented to him. That's right. Which is a better covenant. Better. It's better. better. It's better. 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 Yes. <laughs> what do you say? I, I'm thinking, you know what? That's a better picture. Yes. I'm getting a beautiful picture of how a holy God, when heaven is holy, the yes. angels are holy, yes. the people of God is holy, yes. God residing in us. Yes. It's just making everything beautiful. He's working in us. Mm -hmm. He's writing in our hearts and in our mind. He's helping us out. Yes. We're not trying to live this life on our own. He's doing the work through us. Yes. So what's better? Yeah. What's better than let God have control of our life? Yes. Let's invite him in. Yes. Let's let him invite him in and let him do the work through us. Yes. Yeah, so I thank, I thank God for you. This is a beautiful, beautiful way to live. That's right. It is. And, and anybody who started this way, let's go all the way with all it. All the way. Let's go all the way with it. Yeah, you done put the cigarettes down. Now I'm talking to the, another level. <laughs> yes, 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 sir. <laughs> I'm talking to another level now. You done put the cigarettes down. You done put the extra women down. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. we are, and, and I'm not doing this, you know, it's, it's humor. 
thank God. Yes. We, we applaud that progress. Mm -hmm. and, and God is glad for your progress. Yes. However, he wants you to go on, mm -hmm. on to perfection. On to perfection. On yes. to perfection. You go, you done got, you done set aside your life now. Now you got to sanctification. Now let's perfect holiness. Yes. Let's perfect the way of God. Yes. Let's get every spot and wrinkle and any such thing. Let's move all that stuff out of the way. And let's do this thing on a perfect level. What did you mean on a perfect level? On a complete level. Yes. Whereas it's not partial, but it's complete. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what happens, D, and you, you've been around a while. Sometimes, and you've seen a lot, more than what I've seen, because um, you got more grades. <laughs> yeah, I got it up there. <laughs> uh, and, and your grades represent uh, wisdom, I believe, because the Lord. Uh, your grades are found in the way of righteousness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Thank the Lord. You know, every grade of man ain't wise. <laughs> but but I, I, I know, I've known you for a while, and but you've seen a lot. Haven't you seen where people have come into the way of God, started in the way of God, yes. but not completed the way of God and got satisfied right there in the midst, but hadn't gone all the way, right. and it just kind of stuck. Stuck. Yeah. Have, you, have you seen that? I, I've seen it. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah. And, and what a person going to have to do, they're going to have to surrender. Yes. They're going to have to surrender themselves, mm -hmm. all of themselves to God mm -hmm. so that God can come on in and complete the job. Yes. Don't stop. Yeah. Don't stop. Whatever a person do, call on the Lord, talk to the Lord. You see yourself look like bogged down and mm -hmm. you can't move no, no, no further. Call on the Lord. Yeah. He's there. He's a present help in any one of our situations. Mm -hmm. We might say in time of trouble, but any situation you're yeah. in, yeah. call on the Lord. Yeah. He'll help us through. He's there. He wants to help us yeah. to complete the job, the job, the journey. The things that we started in, God is there to help complete and to complete this whole journey, to complete the man, he want to bring us to perfection. And that is why he's putting people like you mm -hmm. and other preachers and ministers in, in the church. I would say apostles, prophets, teachers, mm -hmm. you know, evangelists, for the perfecting of the, of the saints. Yeah. So we might grow. Yeah. So we might grow and fulfill those things. But we don't want to get bogged down. Exactly. We don't want to get stuck. Exactly. Get stuck. And... and and so we need to call on him because he's a living God. He is a living God. You know, God. he's not a God that, he's not like this plant. No. You know, like some people really, they'll, they'll take a plant, well, or a thing, an object. Mm -hmm. This was made. Yes. This was yes. made. And somebody would worship a made thing. Mm -hmm. But we ought not to worship a made thing because it can't live. It doesn't breathe. It doesn't feel. But no. the God that we serve, he actually is alive. Yes. And he's a help to us. Yes. And he knows our infirmities. Yes. And he knows how to help us. Yes. And so he don't dwell in a temple made with our hands. Mm -hmm. uh, or he's not in a, a, a building where we can worship the building. Mm -hmm. No, we worship the living God, the right. God that lives in us. Yes. And so uh, it's a wonderful thing to serve this true and living true God. Living God. And then have him live in you. Yes, yes. This is the better thing. This, this is, is that better covenant that we're under. Yes. Where he actually wants to live in us and walk in us and talk in us, be our God and we be his people. Yes. Uh, and, and as his people, we are the temple of the living God. Yes. Uh, let's read that again. First yes, sir. Corinthians 3.15. Yes. <clears throat> if any man work should be burned, uh, he started the 16 verse. verse. Yes. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Yes. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Dwelleth in you, living in you. Come right. On. If any man defile. And, and I, another thing I, I, I want to point out about it says dwelleth. Yes. It, 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 it didn't just come and leave, visit. it came to stay. Yes. It didn't visit. Now, in the Old Testament, that's what would happen. Right. The Spirit of God, well, the Spirit ain't new to the New Testament. Mm. It was in the Old Testament. That's it's right. everlasting. Yes. And, and the thing about it is, though, in the Old Testament, what would happen is the prophet spake by the Spirit, but it would move on them, and then it will move off of them as well. It didn't abide with them. But thanks be to God, now, now. it comes to abide, to live, to stay, yes. to lead, and God direct our path in a permanent way. He said, I, Lo, I'm with you always. I'll never leave nor forsake you. Right. And that's the beauty that we have in the way 
of the new covenant in the way that Jesus come to bring and establish in the new covenant. Yes. He wants to live in us and walk in us and be our God and we be his people. Yes. Which is a better covenant. It is a better. Better covenant. And another thing, uh, Deacon Bullen and everybody else, <laughs> another <laughs> thing, another thing is it's so much better in that he had established a certain people out of all the nations. Mm -hmm. He had carved them out a nation. Thank God. But now he has come to every nation. Yes. Out of every nation, every nation. he that feared God and worked righteousness is accepted with him. Yes. Not just the Jews. Now he come to the Jews and the Gentiles, tear down the wall of petition between us and make out of twine one new person. One new person. One new, one, one new people that will serve and obey him and make us a holy temple in the Lord. In the Lord, yes. A holy temple, not, right. you know, separate and divided, but one yeah. new creature. That's right. Which is a holy temple in the Lord. Yes. A holy church. A holy church, yes. And the church is the body of Christ. The body of Christ. One. Yes. Many members. Yes. Many members. But there's only one body. Yes. And we are members in particular, yes. but there's just one body. And we are to love one another we are to serve one another. Mm -hmm. We are to worship God and serve God. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this is a beautiful way beautiful. to live. Yes. We have a God that abides with us, mm -hmm. that can comfort us. Mm -hmm. And we're getting comfort not only through meditating on the Lord, but through one another. Yes, we right. can comfort ye one another. That's right. So to live for God is much better than anything that I've ever experienced. Yes. You know, I was out in the world and I did the things of the world. But when I came to the Lord mm -hmm. and started worshiping the Lord and, and I could call on him just about any time mm -hmm. because he abides in me. Yeah. He's with me always. Yeah. And when times of sorrow, he's right there. Right. Times of trouble, he's right there. Mm -hmm. Things might not go smooth all the time. Mm -hmm. But one good thing. God is always there. That's right. To help me in any situation mm -hmm. that I'm in. That's and I right. thank God for that. Surrender. Yes. I say surrender yourself to yes. God. Let God come in and let him do the work in you. That's right. He, let him do it. Be the temple. Yes. Be holy. Yes. He said, for I am holy. I am holy. That's right. That's right. And we can do this uh, in this present evil world, in this present evil age that we're in. Uh, let's go down to the book of Romans. Uh, hold this in uh, uh, Corinthians. Let's go to Romans. Um, uh, this is uh, Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, that you present your body a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Holy. Holy. Acceptable unto God. This is what God accepts. Which is your reasonable service. And it's reasonable for it you is. to do this. Yeah. What God accepts is good and reasonable and it's good for us and yes. good for our bodies. Right. And good for the life that we live in this present evil world. Yes. You know, even marriage. The Bible says marriage is honorable and all. all. The mm. bed undefiled. Right. But adulterers and homemongers, God will judge. Right. And one of the reasons why he judges is because it's not good for us. It's not good. It's not good for us. It's not good for holiness. It don't fit the way of holiness. No, it doesn't. Uh, and, you know, I even noticed that even in parenting, you're a father of seven. Yes. And, um, and I'm the father of three. And so I understand parenthood. And when, as a parent, we punish behavior. Mm -hmm. And yes. oftentimes it's not because we get joy out of it. It's because we don't want our children going down a road that's a, that's a detriment to them. Right. It's not that it helps us as much as it helps them more. It helps them more than it helps us. Yes. And so... The thing is, we don't want to see our children destroyed. That's right. And, and we care and love our natural children. And as a natural father, we have concern and we correct our natural children because we want what's best for them. Yes. And God is better than us. He's better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's better than us. And so he's not just trying to kill our fun and our joy. Mm -hmm. He's actually trying to give us joy. Joy, yes. And give us a better way of life that's eternal and not just temporal. Things that you're just going to get a little pleasure out of now and, and, and ultimately end up in your eternal damnation. Mm -hmm. 
He wants what's best for us. He does. And so that's why he corrects us. And that's why he gives us instruction. And that's why he wants holiness for us because holiness is the best life. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. It's the best life. Mm-hmm. See? Yeah. He come and scourge us. He yes. said every son that he received, yes. he scourged them that they might be partakers yes. of his of whole, his holiness. Of his holiness. Yes. He wants us to be like him. He wants to experience the things that he experienced, which is the good things. Yes. It's yes. good that he came, Christ came to bring life. Right. And then that more abundant that life. That abundant life. We are living in that abundant life. We're in this world mm-hmm. and all the stuff that's going on around us, mm-hmm. but we are protected by God. We are getting the best out of life. Right. When a person surrenders to God yeah. and live a holy life, they escape so much of the trouble and the things and the turmoil that's going on around in the world. Yes. We're in it, but we're in this world, but we're not part of it. Yes. We live in a beautiful life. I'm not, I'm not the richest man in the world, yes. but the things that I have, I could appreciate it yes. and I could enjoy it. I could give God thanks for it. Yes. I'm not sitting back worried about who's going to steal my money. (laughs) You know, know, uh, like a lot of the rich, the rich are, Mm -hmm. you know, not going after all the things in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm going after Christ. And in Christ is peace. Yes. It's joy. Yes. Even in time of trouble, you're still getting joy. Yes, right. You got gladness, you know. You got all the fruits of the spirit. Right. Spirit, the things that make a life enjoyable right here in the midst of all the things and trouble and things on the news and all that. All these things are going on. But God in us, yes. you know, living in us, yes. being a temple for God, yes. uh, it makes life living here so much better. Yes. God's way yes. is the best way. Yes. It's the best way to live. That's right. That's right. He the, he the author. Yeah. The finisher of our faith. He's the one that started this thing out. Mm-hmm. In fact, not only so, he is the author of life in, in, in is, period. Right. And, and he's the one that created life. Mm-hmm. And he's the one that created us. Right. And he separated us uh, from our mother's womb. And then he made the first man. Yes. Out of dirt, dust, and ashes. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's wonderful how if he can make man out of dirt, dust, and ashes, I know that he can live in us to get the, to, that we might be able to get the best the out best. of this life. Right. The manufacturer want to live in you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, wants to, he wants to dwell in you. The creator. The creator <laughs> wants to dwell in you. Yeah. And if you let him rule, you're going to get the best yeah. out of what he made. Right. Not only in the world to come, but even in, in this, this world. world. This in this world. present evil world, yes. you're going to get the best out of, the, out of your life. Mm-hmm. By surrendering it over yes. to God, submit, yeah, yes. and submitting to God. And the Bible says that we should present our bodies to God as a living mm-hmm. sacrifice, holy, mm-hmm. acceptable unto Him, because He's our reasonable it's service. It's reasonable. It's reasonable. Right. In fact, it don't make sense to do anything else. That's right. To, to do anything other than that don't make a lot of sense. It don't make any sense. Yeah. Don't make sense. Yeah. Why would you surrender yourself to Satan, who's actually trying to steal, kill, and destroy you? Right. Yeah, you know, and it just doesn't make sense. Don't make sense. Uh, for your family, it don't make sense for your husband, your wife, your children. It doesn't make sense for your no. finances, for your health. Right. This will bless your whole life. That's right. And I'm not talking about a prosperity plan. No. I'm talking about living in a life where God is conducting you. You're going to do well in this world, even in the world to come, even if you have to suffer in this life. He suffered that he might make you perfect and complete in all of his will so that you can have an eternal inheritance with him. A lot of things now, uh, people are just trying to enjoy this life. But this life is passing away. It's passing away. But he comes that we might have an abundant life, mm-hmm. which actually extends beyond this life. That's right. Even if I died at 50, I've got eternity for him to make it up to me. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, I a, see it like a hundred, that. A hundred years, 200 years, it ain't much. Not it's compared to not eternity. To, not to eternity, right. I, I'm a, I, I just share this with you, Deke. I was in a uh, community and, and doing some outreach. And one of the gentlemen had a gun. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just come to my heart. Go talk to him, too. Yes. Go talk to him, too. And, and after I talked to him, I talked to him. And he looked like he was getting a little agitated. I, but I talked to him a little bit. And then I went on. And I thought about it a little later. I said, well, why was I scared? <laughs> <laughs> well, really, really, if I left early, mm-hmm. I still 
still got life. Right. My life is not just here. I believe I have eternal life. And that eternal life is inside of me right now. Right. That's what's housing, what's being housed in this temple. We have, the scripture says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. It's living in us right now. Yes. If we're sanctified, if we're living holy and God is in us, we have a treasure that's inside of us right now. That's right. And the treasure no man takes from us. That's right. Can't. You can't take you it can't from take us. It. It's reserved for us yeah. in heaven. Right. And can't nobody steal it. No identity <laughs> theft. That's None right. of that is this with what God has for us. That's right. <laughs> God got it in his vault. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you can't, can't get through. through. You can't break through. Oh, moth won't corrupt it. <laughs> no, nothing. No, this is an incorruptible crown. That's right. That's something that does not fade away. Don't fade away. And nobody can inherit my inheritance. That's right. Nobody can steal my inheritance, not with God. No, not you can God. steal my natural inheritance, but not my eternal inheritance with God. Right. And this is the beauty of holiness. Right. That's why it's such a reasonable thing yes. to serve the almighty God. The almighty God. Who in the beginning had a paradise for man. That's right. And it was beautiful. It was good and very good. That's right. Sin came in, messed mm -hmm. it up. Yeah. But God loved man so much that he said, well, I'm going to give you a new heaven uh -huh. and a new earth. Yeah. This time, you ain't going to let no unrighteous thing enter into it. That's right. So he, he already saw... He already saw that what we need was a new heaven and a new earth where nothing but righteousness is going to dwell in, and he's going to give it to us. Yeah. Now, if he's going to give it to us, all we have to do is come to him. Yes. He died for it. Yes. He died for it. He rose for it. Yes. And all he said was, say, come unto me. Yeah, all <laughs> yeah. your labor. Yeah. And heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Isn't it a reasonable thing to avoid Hell, yes. and to come and live in a new heaven yes. and a new earth. It's a reasonable thing that God has offered to us. A choice. Hmm. Death, mm -hmm. life. Yes. Uh, it shouldn't take a, a brain surgeon <laughs> yes. to choose life. Choose life. And live. And live. Forever. That's right. Forever. And, now, and while we're on this earth, Christ will dwell in us. Mm -hmm and love us, and we will love him, yes. we will get the best out of life that we can give, get. Mm -hmm. And God is with us with all the wonderful things that he has promised us, even in the midst of trouble. Mm -hmm. He's right there to give us joy. Yes. Now, I mean, this is just a better way to live. I just don't understand why, well, in a way, I understand Satan has blind the minds yeah, of the people. Yeah. He has blind the mind, thinking that this, in this life, the little pleasures of this life mean so much, mm -hmm. but it does not. I would be like Moses. I'd rather suffer with the children of God yes. than enjoy the pleasures of sin just for a season. For a season. Because it's just a season. Mm -hmm. A hundred years, two hundred years, even a thousand years is just a season. Yes. Compared to eternal life. Compared to eternal life. That's right. That's yeah. right. So uh, why wouldn't we serve? Why wouldn't we serve? The true and living God right. that comes to give us everlasting life. Right. And not only everlasting life, but also all things. All things. The Bible says in Revelation 21 and 7, it says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Right. See? But the fearful and, and the abominable. Yeah. And idolaters and adults. Well, let's look at it very briefly. Uh, yes. Those that just really won't present themselves and become that temple for the living God. And, and those that are not willing to overcome. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're afraid of what the folks might say. Yeah, what they say. Uh, afraid they got FOMO. Right. Uh, what they yeah. call FOMO. You know what FOMO means? Yeah. I'm going to see if you know it. You, you kind of. FOMO. FOMO. F-O-M-O. It's a, like an acronym. Okay. No. FOMO. Fear yeah. of missing out. Oh, fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. And so, really, some people have a fear of missing out. So, they want to stay out in the world because they feel like they might miss out on something oh, the world. that's out there in the world. Right. And actually, you ought to be afraid of missing out on what's in the kingdom of God. Yes. That's what you ought to be afraid right. of. Mm -hmm. See, and, and, and serve God 
in holiness and righteousness without fear of missing out on what's in the world mm -hmm. because he's got something better than what's in the world. So much better. So much better. And so the Bible is talking here in Revelation, in Revelation 21, 21 and 7. 21 and 7. Yes. He that overcometh. He that overcometh. Shall inherit How all many things. things. How many things? All things. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. And the Lord God say, I will be his God. And he shall be my son. And he shall be my son. But the fearful. But the fearful. And unbelieving. And unbelieving. And the abominable. And the abominable. And murderers. Murderers. And whoremongers. whoremongers and sorcerers. Sorcerers. And idolaters. And idolaters. And all liars. All liars. Shall have their part in the lake. Which? Burdens with fire and brimstone. Which, de which death is this? Is the second death. Oh, here's the problem, the brothers and sisters, death. is that if you live in sin and serve sin and don't present your body to God as a living sacrifice and become that temple and vessel of it's honor and, and a vessel for God, then now you have a second death. A second death. We already have an appointment once to die. Now we'll have a second death if we are abominable. Mm -hmm. If we walk in abomination and live in abomination and let Satan and sin live in us and right. reign in this mortal body. And the Lord has commanded, let not sin therefore reign. reign in your mortal body. You are a temple for the living God. Right. You don't right. supposed to let sin reign in no, it. Don't let sin we are going to be held accountable for letting it. Right. He said, let not. Right. Which means you have a charge and you have the authority over Right. And sin don't supposed to have dominion over you. That's right. You're supposed to have dominion over sin. Yes. And he's come to give you that dominion. Yes. And not only give you um, uh, that dominion, he actually gives you the gift of righteousness. Yes. We he talked about that uh, yes. some weeks ago where he, he gives you the gift of righteousness. Yes. And that gift of righteousness actually gives you a uh, power to live right. Yes. We do. So you don't have to live wrong or in sin. You can live in the righteousness of God. Yes. Not your own righteousness, or my righteousness, your righteousness, but his righteousness. His righteousness. He come to give you the gift of his righteousness so you can live in the righteousness of God. Right. And overcome and live with him and reign with him throughout eternity. Yes. Don't let sin reign in you. No. Don't let no. sin live in you. No. Present your body to God as a living sacrifice. And then if you feel like you're holy already, now you have a charge. Perfect holiness Perfect and overcome all things. Yes. He that overcomes, you got to overcome all this all thing. Yes. You got to overcome this, this sin business and 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 Envy, strife, yes. not just look a beer, wine, and extra marital situation. No, you got to overcome envy, strife, the filth of the flesh and the spirit. Yes, that's right. You got to get all that get stuff all, out of the way. Get it all out. The spots and the wrinkles and the such thing. Yes. Oh, don't think this message is just to the, the sinner out there in the world, out no. on the street. No, you, if you're a sinner in the church, you got to straighten up too. That's right. Oh, you got to come correct. Mm -hmm. when, you, when we stand before the holy God, he's going to be looking for holiness oh, without yes. spot or wrinkle mm -hmm. or any such thing. He's coming to receive a church unto himself without blemish. Without blemish. No blemishes. That's right. No errors. Right. You got to get all the errors out. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we can do it. And we can do it. Because he's going to give us the power. And he's going to help us. Yes. Now we got to believe we can do it. Yes. But we got to believe in the power of God and the right. help that he come to help us with. Right. And so we're glad about that today. So now let's read that one more time. Revelation 21 and 7. 21 he, and he 7. He that overcoming shall inherit all things. Shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. I will be his God. And he shall be my son. He shall be my son. But the fearful. But there's another group. Yes. Now, some of them ain't going to overcome. They're afraid. They're yes. afraid to come to God. Come. They got fear in them. They yes. think they're going to miss out on something out yes. there in the world. Mm -hmm. My friend out there, he doing this, he doing that. And I, I, if I come to, I had some of that in me, uh, D. I did. I had some of that mm -hmm. in me. Even the day I came to God. Mm -hmm. Uh, something tried to talk to my mind. Said, yes. "Well, now you young. Now, right. now if you come right now, there's some things you ain't gonna be able yeah. to do. Yeah. You're so young, and you haven't been with all the women, and you hadn't been to the club, and you hadn't drank, and, mm -hmm. and done all these things. Old demon, lying, yeah, lying. demon. He, he's a liar. he tried to hook me. Yes, he tried to hook me. Uh, you know, they say they say Satan thought he had me, but I got away. <laughs> yeah, thank God. <laughs> he was trying to work with my mind, yeah. even the very day I came to God. Yes. 
don't come right now. Mm -hmm. You know, wait, wait a while, wait a while. And I even say it to you listening to me now, some that haven't come yet. Uh, the devil is trying to get you to harden your heart. Uh -huh. The scripture say the day you hear the Lord's voice, harden not your harden heart. Not Here comes the devil trying to harden you up, say, well, not now, not now. But the scripture say the day, the day, the today, day. today is the day of salvation. Yes. Not tomorrow or next right. week. In fact, right. you ought to call me today. Right. You listening to me now? Call right. me today. 423-316-8011. You ought to call me today. I'll give it to you again. A little slower. 423-316-8011. One, one. You ought to give me a call right. and say, Pastor, I heard you. I need to get baptized. I need to yes. repent of my sins. I need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I need to recognize and receive Christ into this temple. Yes. And I want to present my temple to him yes. as a living sacrifice. And I want God to live in me. I want God to walk in me. I want him to dwell in me. I've been defiling my temple and I don't want to do it no more. I want to surrender it over. Yes. I, I know it belonged to him, but now I just want to surrender it. I want to turn it in. Mm -hmm. Turn it back into God. Let him have his way. Right. Life. So yeah, that's what you ought to do. You hear the Lord's voice now. He's knocking at the door of your heart. Let, let him come in. Let him yeah, dwell let in it, you. It, he want to live in you. He want to dwell in you. The, the scripture said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man come open up, I come in and yes. sup with him. Yes, I, 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 he want to live in you. Right. Uh, I think this is in uh, Revelation. Yeah. Uh, that round two, two and about twenty. Two and twenty. Let's yes. see what it say. Revelation two and twenty. Let's see what the scripture say. <clears throat> Let's see. I invite you to get your King James version of the Bible and follow us along in your Bible. Three and twenty, I think this. Try. Three and twenty. Three and twenty. Come on. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Revelation three and twenty. If any man hear my voice, if any man hear my voice, and open the door, and open the door, I will come in to him. I come in to him, and will sup with him. And I will sup with him, and he with me. He with me. To him that overcometh. And to him that overcometh. Will I grant to sit with me. To uh, grant him to sit with me. In my throne. In my throne. Even as I also overcame. Even as I also and overcame. And sit down with my father in his throne. So now we can sit with the father. Yeah. You can sit with the father. We can be with the Lord. And we can be with him if we would open the door of our heart and let him come in. Let him come on in. Let him come in. He yeah. want to come in. Yeah. He want to come in. He said, I behold, I stand at the door and knock. And knock. <laughs> and he's he, trying to break in now. Though. Right. Now you got to open the door. Yeah, if any man hear my voice. Yeah. And he hearing it today. Yeah. And open the door. Open. I will come into him. I come in there. And will sup with him. I sup with him. And he with me. And he with me. That's a promise from God. Yeah, that's a promise. All the person got to do is just open up open the day. Open the door. Yeah, oh. and let the Lord come on let in, him invite on him in. in. Let him he in. ain't going to break in. He ain't break invite in. him on in. He's an intelligent God. <laughs> yes. He's an intelligent God. What do people have against serving God? It's reasonable to serve. It's reasonable to serve. The what benefits if, are great. Great. Yeah. What if he done against us? Yeah. He didn't do nothing against us. He did everything for us. He's not willing that any should perish. Any should perish. That's right. But that all men shall come to repentance. That's right. Because he wants all men to enter into that new heaven yeah. and that new earth. He want to come in yeah. and he want to commune with us. Right. He want to commune with us. That's all we have to do is let him in. That's right. That's easy. Just open the door and let him in. Let him in. Let him in. And so we are the temple of the living God. We are the temple. Yeah. And so let's go now to the book of uh, Corinthians 6. Uh, Corinthians 6 and about 13. First Corinthians 6 and 13. 1 Corinthians 6 and 13. Okay. <clears throat> invite you to get it in your Bible. Meat for the belly. Meat for the belly. And belly for the meat. And belly for meat. But God will destroy both it and them. Yes. Now the body is not for fornication. Yes. But for the Lord. The body is not for fornication, but the body is for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And the Lord is for the body. And God has both raised up the Lord. Yes. And will also raise up us 
By his own power. By his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ Come on. and make them the members of an harlot? Come on. God forbid. God says no. What know ye not yes. that he which is joined to an harlot yes. is one body? Is one body. For one said he shall be one flesh. For two said he shall be one flesh. Yes. Come on. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. one spirit. Man, it's time to get joined to the Lord. Get joined to him. Get joined to him. And, and when we join to him, then he's in us and we in him. him. Let's go a little bit further. Yes, sir. Flee fornication. Flee fornication. Get away from fornication. Now. Every sin that a now, man do. Now, don't do thank it. you the temple of God now and God dwelling in you and you out there uh, shacking up and living with your boyfriend, living right. with your girlfriend. Right. Or even married and out there with some extra woman or extra man. No, God no. ain't, he ain't not dwelling in that unclean temple like That's that. That's right. No, you're going to have to clean that up now. Clean it up. Now, you got to clean it up now. Yes. God ain't against you, he for you. Yes. But you're going to have to clean it up. Yes. Let's see what the scripture say first. Every sin that a man do is yeah. without the body. Sin Sin that a man do it without the body. But he that committed fornication. What did he do now? Sin it against his he own sin body. against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Your body is the temple for the Holy Ghost. Which is in you. Which is in you. Which you have of God. Which you have of God. And you are not your own. You don't own. belong to yourself. For you are bought with a price. God already done bought you. Now some of you hadn't, he hadn't redeemed you yet because you hadn't presented yourself back to him yet. That's right. He done bought you. He already done paid the price. But you just out there, uh, 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 <laughs> how do I say it? We, we need to put the low jack on you. <laughs> <laughs> so God can come and re recover yes. what yes. belonged to him. Yes. That's you understand? Right. Yes. You just out there just frolicking with God's body. God mm -hmm. don't, he don't appreciate it either. No, you don't. And not only do he not appreciate uh, uh, the, the sexual sin, he don't appreciate the, the spiritual sins either. That's right. All the lying, all of the uh, backbiting, right. whispers, and, right. and all that evil that might be in the spirit of a man. Yes. That hatred that's in the heart, the malice. Right. The evil intent toward your neighbor. God don't like that. No, he don't. And he's angry with the wicked every day. Yeah. And some of the wickedness is in, it works out in the flesh with drinking and smoking and, and, and extramarital affairs and and fornication and uh, men with men and women with women. God is against that yes. because it's against even your flesh. But there are some spiritual things where your heart is not right. Right. And God is saying you got to purge that out your heart. Too. Yes. Because the thing that come out of you, that's what's defiling you. Yes. That's what's defiling the temple of God. Am I right about that? You're right. All right. Now, yes. it's in the book. It is. It's yes, in the sir. book. Amen. No, he's not the... Not that your body is nope. the temple of the Holy Ghost. And God don't just want your heart. Mm. God wants your body, body, your soul. He wants your heart. He wants every part. Yes. Not just your body or not just your heart. He wants the body too. Yes. Let's yes. see what the Bible says. Say, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you. Which is in you. Which ye have of God. Which ye have of God. And ye are not your own. You're not your own. For ye are bought with a price. You're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God. Yeah. Come on now. In your body. In your body. And in your spirit. Which are? God. It's all God. God. Yes. We don't own nothing. No. This is my body. I do what I want. No. You belong to God. Yes. You are the temple of the living God. Yes. God wants to live in you. It's a privilege for him to live in you. Yes. Why do you want to live beneath the privilege of God living in you? Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. It's Hallelujah. a better way to live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't understand. I'm yeah. just trying to persuade yeah. me. That's right. Come on. Live with God. And live for him. Live. And, and if you have started, mm -hmm. let's go all the way to the end. Yes. Don't start and stop. Yes. Don't get bogged down in the middle. Don't put your bottle down and your cigarettes down and your weed down and you put the extra marital things down. Now put down the lying and put down the spiritual filth too. Yeah. Cleanse yourself from all filth of the flesh and yes. spirit. Yes. Perfecting holiness in the fear, in of, the God. fear of God. Let's go on to perfection. Yeah. Let's stop getting baptized over and over again. Right. And start living holy. Right. Sanctified. Yes. Holy yes. Ghost feeling fire baptized. Yes, sir. Get fervent about the thing. Yes. Don't just come to church. Right. Sit with folded arms. No. Let the deacons praise God. And That's you sit back like you dead. That's right. The dead praise not the Lord. That's right. We are lively stones. Lively Built stone. up as a spiritual house of holy. Holy. In the Lord. Yes. yes. Come on and <laughs> praise God. Glorified. What you doing out 
about that. Yeah. You ought to come on in here. <laughs> That's right. And praise God with us. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. Yes, Get sir. sanctified. Yeah. Holy Ghost filled. Yeah. Fire baptized. Fire baptized. Get some fire in your belly. Yeah. Fire in your soul. Yeah. And burn up all that sin business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let God live in you. Reign in you. Yeah. And then you can live and reign with Christ. Not only a thousand years, but throughout eternity. Throughout eternity. Hallelujah to Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. <laughs> God Amen. is good. God yes. is good. Yeah, make you feel good even now. Sit down ah, here. Yes. Feel good now. He's Talking in us. about the Lord. Christ yeah. in us. The hope yeah. of glory. Hope of glory. Yeah. And, and he got an unspeakable joy. Yeah. Joy unspeakable and full, full of glory. Of glory. Yeah. You ought to come taste and yeah. see that the, the Lord, Lord is good. Is good. You want to live in you. Come on now. You want to dwell in <laughs> That's right. Oh, you're supposed to be the temple of the living God. Yes. All right. Let's see what the Bible said in Mark 7. Mm -hmm. Mark 7, I think this is. And um, let's see. It was 7 about... 15 or so. Hmm. Mark 7, 15. Let's see what that says. Mark 7, 15. What does that say? There is nothing from without. Mm -hmm. if there is nothing from without a man mm -hmm. that enter into him can defile him. So they were having a situation and conversation about mm -hmm. unclean things, mm -hmm. eating with unwashed hands. And, and the Lord began to let them know that the thing that come from without a man, that's not what defiles him. Right. But the thing that come, come from within, that's out, right. that come out of the man, not what he bring in from out of him, but what comes out of the man, that's what's defiling him. Right. Let's see what the scripture says. There's nothing from without a man come on. that entered into him can defile him. Yeah, like bread but, or like uh, some fish or some meat or, uh, or even to eat with unwashed hands. That's right. Not, I'm not telling you don't eat with... I'm not telling you not to wash your hands. Wash it, please. But, <laughs> but the reality of it is they were trying to put more emphasis on wash hands right. than a sanctified vessel. Yes. Being sanctified themselves. That was the issue. Yes. Let's see what the scripture said a little bit further. But the thing which come out of him. The thing that come out of the man. Those are they that defile the man. This is what defiling the man. If any man have ears to hear, yes. let him hear. Come on. And when he had entered into the house from the people, yes. his disciples asked him concerning the parable. Yes. And he said unto them, What? Are ye so without understanding also? Y'all don't understand either. Do ye not perceive Come on. that whatsoever things from without enter into the man, yeah. it cannot defile That's him. That's not what's going to defile because him. Because it enters not into his heart. It don't go into his heart. But into the belly. It goes into the belly. And going out into the draw. And the belly know what to do. It knows how to purge all, all meat. Yes. That's what God put bacteria in. He made the belly. And the belly is kind of strong, actually. Yes. And the belly know how to get rid of Things that don't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. That's not what defiles a man, especially not with God. Yes, sir. Now, however, some things you eat can make you physically sick, but the situation that Jesus was coming to heal was a spiritual illness. Yes. A sin illness. Yes. And the thing that you eat does not cause sin. It is what comes out of you that's causing the sin problem. That's right. And Jesus was coming to heal the people from their sin. Yes, sir. And that was his whole express purpose was to save his people from right. their sins. That's right. And he wants to live in and dwell in us, but not have sin live in us at the same time. Yes, sir. He wants to live in us without sin. Right. He wants sin out and his spirit in. Yes. He come to kick the sin out and the devil out so his spirit can dwell in us. Yes, sir. Let's see what the scripture says first. And he said. And he said. That which cometh out of a man. This is Mark 7. And 20. And 20. And he said. What? That which cometh out of the man. That which cometh out of the man. That defileth the man. That's what's defiling you. For for from within, for from within, out of the heart of men, out of the heart of receive men, receive evil thoughts, evil thoughts, adultery, adultery, fornication, fornication, murders, murders, thefts, thefts, covetousness, covetousness, wickedness, wickedness, deceit, deceit, lasciviousness, lasciviousness, and evil eye, and evil eye, blasphemy, blasphemy, pride, pride, foolishness, foolishness. All these evil things come, come from within and, and defile the man. We got to get this jug out. Got to get it out. So God can come in, yes. so we'll be a sanctified vessel, meat for the master's use. Yes. We're purged. Purged. We're cleansed. Yes. And we're sanctified. Yes. And we'll meet for the master's use. Yes. The temple of the living God. Yes. As God has said, I will walk in them. Yes. I will dwell in them. Yes. They shall be, be my people. people. I'll be people. their God. Yes. They'll be my people. Yes. And I'm glad for it today. And this yes, is what sir. God wants to do. Yes. And this is why we are teaching this gospel today. Yes. Is sir. because we want to motivate you and, right. and urge you. 
to, to present your body to God as a living sacrifice. And those who have already done so, let's purge out all this foolishness, mm -hmm. all these uh, excess things. Yeah. And sometimes we've started in the journey, but we got to go all the way. All the way. We got to go all the way. Like Epaphras, as he was ministering to some of the people in Colossians 4 and 12, Epaphras, who was one of the people, and I'm one of you. I'm, I'm a native of uh, America, and I'm one of you. Mm -hmm. I'm a native of the human family. Yes. I'm one of you. Yes. yes. <laughs> say, well, you're a black man. I'm white. And I'm Hispanic. Well, yes. I'm in the human family. Yes. I'm one of you. Yeah. <laughs> Stop telling. <laughs> let's tear this wall down between the Hispanics and the blacks and yes. the whites. I'm one of you. Right. I'm in the human family. Yes, sir. And I wish your perfection. I want you to be complete in God. I want yes, you to sir. come into God's family. God mm -hmm. ain't come to make a black family, a white family, a Hispanic family. He come to make a holy family. Yeah. Yes. I'm one of you. One of you. <laughs> and in this time, in the book of Colossians 4 and about 12, there was this minister named Epaphras, and he was one of the uh, people of Colossae, evidently. Yeah. And he was one of those. And, he, and so Paul was writing to the people of Colossae, and he says, Epaphras. Who is one of you. Who is one of you. A servant of Christ. A servant of saluted Christ. Saluted you. He salutes you. Always laboring fervently Always for you in prayer. Always laboring fervently for you in prayer. That you may stand perfect. That you may stand perfect. And complete. And complete. In all the will of God. In all the will of God. Wonderful. And part of God's will is that we present our bodies to him a as a living sacrifice. Holy we God. are the temple of the living God. We are. And we want God to live in us and dwell in us and walk in us and be our God and we be his people. Yes. And as we are his people, you his people, I'm his people, and then we can love one another. Yes. As he commanded us. And so we appreciate you being here with us tonight. That's the food for tonight. And we're glad that you were with us. And we invite you to come back to another hour of power. God willing, next Monday around 730, come back to the hour of power. And we invite you to come to the house of God. Yes. We're located at 679 Glendale Road in Clarkston, Georgia. And we love to have you in the house. Sunday morning, worship 10 o'clock, 1130 worship service. And of course, Monday night, hour of power, 730. Additionally, if you'd like to help us in this ministry, to help us to go forward, and yes. we might have to begin to travel and go different places. If you'd like to help us in this ministry, you can do so with the Cash App. And the Cash App uh, ID is dollar sign Lucas Temple 679. Yes, sir. Dollar sign Lucas Temple 679. And God loves a cheerful giver, and that's why I'm glad to be one myself. Yes, sir. And so we appreciate you and all your help. May the Lord bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Until next time. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.